closest binary search tree value 2. I don't know how hard it was 1, but we'll see. Let's get started. Start. Right. Given a non empty binary search tree and a target value, find k values in the binary search tree that are closest to the target. Given target value is a floating point, you may assume k is always valid, that is, k is less than an equal uh, uh, to total nodes. So you are guaranteed to have only one unique set of k values in the BST that are closest to the target. You're guaranteed to have only one unique set of k values in the binary search tree that are closest to it. One unique set of k values. So, what does that mean? What kind of information can we uh, extract from this piece of information? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, so So the, basically, let's take a look at the example. Four two five one three, and the target is three point seven one four two eight six, and k is two. So we want to find the the two of the closest values to the target. Okay, uh, so we have four two five uh, one three. This is the standard uh, standard binary search tree, and the output is four three because now uh, this is. So four two five one three essentially uh, we have one two three four five uh, if we sort it out and uh, so if we have one two three four five and then the target is three point seven now obviously three point seven is closer to four and five I mean four and three uh, so by subtracting uh, the target with four you and compare the uh, compare the difference the absolute difference. Uh, it's gonna be the smallest, and then you have you can be a three and five. Um, obviously, three it's going to be smaller. I mean, the difference between target and three it's gonna be smaller. So, <clears throat> um, so what I'm thinking right now is, well, uh, there's a follow up. Assume that the binary search is balanced. Could you solve it in less than n one time? Hmm, I don't know about that. Uh. Okay, so so first of all, let, let's think of one property of unique property of a binary search tree, which is the left node is going to be smaller than the root, and the root is smaller than the right node. So essentially, if we if we traverse binary search tree in a say in order traversal, then well, uh, so if we traverse a uh, binary search tree in orderly, um, and uh, we'll get a sorted notes, we'll also get a sorted values, right? A list of sorted values. So if we traverse this binary search tree, so we'll have one, two, three, and then four, five, and uh, Yes, if we can sort this out, say one, two, three, four, five, because at the at the end of the day, actually the order of this list. Now, right now we're looking at it. It just looks like a list, right? So, uh, the, the order of the list it doesn't matter. What we care about is if we put three point seven in into this sorted list. Say, let's say if this is sorted one, two, three, four, five, and then we put three point seven. In between, in um, among this list, uh, I mean this uh, values, uh, then it'd be very clear uh, for us to know that uh, the close what are the closest value, and it'd be, it'd be fairly easier to compare. Say if we put so if we have uh, one two three four five, and then we put three point seven in between three and four, then we even we can just. Uh, Compare the uh, the let's say two lists right next to uh, three point seven. This the list on the left and the list on the right uh, on on the side to three point seven, and then we can take one number 
out of the left list out, and excuse me, and the other number from the right list, and then we'll compare the absolute difference between these two numbers and the uh, between this number to the target and that the other number to the target, and then we will compare and we decide which number which number to put to the result set or list. Um, so I think uh, so I think we can first traverse the list. I'm sorry. First, we can traverse. Just checking time. Make sure I have time to code. Okay. So first. Uh, what I'm thinking of is that we can traverse the tree in order per traversal. Do a in order traversal, which means left, root, right. So we do an in order traversal, and then while we at the same time while we are traversing, whenever we see a node, whenever we see a node that is whose value is larger than the target number or let's start from the smaller first because i'm thinking of uh, i'm thinking of uh, listing the listing them in a ascending order from left to right from left to right oh yeah the camera is in reverse um but bear with me so from left from left to right so if so, while we're traversing, whenever we see a value that is smaller than target, we will put it to a stack, right? Because uh, essentially, we want, want, want to get uh, as we are pi uh, piling up the stack. Uh, when we want to, we want to abstract the latest node, the the, the most recent added note uh, to, to compare it with the difference now so we first we will use the stack and then so well first we'll traver we'll have a, a in order traversal and then while we do this we'll have a the stack to keep track of the number, the nodes that are smaller than the target, and uh, uh, and then we have another list. Now, for for the the other list on the other list on the right, do we use a stack? We don't necessarily. We are, we're not necessarily using the latest added node. We are actually uh, you are actually using the 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 the, mm, the least recent or the earliest added node for the uh, for for the for the list on the right, uh, which means that is a first come first first in first out, which means that it is a queue. So we'll have a queue. Uh, for the nodes that are smaller and equal to target, okay, and then we do inverse in order, and then after we have um, uh, done this in order traversal, what we what we do is that uh, let me adjust the okay, okay. Uh, after we've done the in order traversal, and then we have uh, uh, populated. The stack and the queue, and what we need to do now is just to uh, simply uh, keep track of uh, uh, the results, and then we will uh, while k something like while k is k minus minus is larger than zero, and then we will do something like uh, so. So we'll add uh, notes to the result. From the stack and Q. Okay, all right. So let's do this now. First of all, we'll have a stack. 
we'll have a stack. This will be an integer, and we'll have a stack is equal to new stack integer note, and then we'll have a Q integer. What the heck is some? Yeah, I'm kind of tired right now. Integer and Q new linked list because Q is just an interface. You need a linked list to implement this. Okay, so we will have to uh, traverse the linked list. So let's say uh, traverse. Now traverse is we're traversing. Obviously, we need to know the root and then we need the target, and we need the stack, and then we need the queue. Okay, so uh, let's write this traverse function, private uh, no uh, void, and then traverse, uh, we'll have a tree node uh, root, and uh, we will have a target. And then we will have a float number, which is um, a float, which is um, target. And then we will have a stack. Uh, here I'll just be uh, lazy a little bit. I'll just uh, copy and paste these. Okay, now. Okay, let's start writing this function. So first of all, if uh, root is null, then obviously we don't need to do anything, we can just return. And if, if it's not now, um, which means for first of all, uh, we'll need to see if the root is target. So if uh, the root, the value of this root is equal, is less than uh, target. Now, one important thing is that we in, uh, for this comparison, we need to convert the root value to a double. So if root is less than target, and we will uh, put this to a uh, push it to a stack. So root dot val. Okay. Uh, else, if it's not, then we will do a q. It's offer right. Offer root dot val right. Okay. So, and then, well, <laughs> this is a little bit tricky because uh, I almost got tricked uh, by myself. I first, I, um, I, right now I'm just traversing the route, but first of all, it's in order, so we need to uh, traverse. We need to put the root dot uh, left. Yes. Traverse the left node first and then the target. And then we will need to have stack, and then we'll have Q, right? And then pretty much gonna be similar to this. What we need to do at the end is to traverse the right root. Okay. Now we have done implementing the traverse function. Now what we need to do is so now the stack. And Q, it's uh, are, uh, are 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 populated. So, what we need to do now is to start, uh, as we said, while k in minus minus is larger than zero. So we need to start. Uh, 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 yeah, we need to start uh, an analyze, uh, analyzing this. Uh, that stack and queue. So, so well, first of all, we need a result. Uh, we need something to save the result, right? So, uh, integer. Well, we'll have a result is equal to new linked linked list integer. Okay. So, while the k minus minus is larger than zero. Okay. So. Uh, well, first of all, we will compare. We will compare. Um, mm, 
uh, well, we there are three circumstances, right? There are three circumstances. So first of all, um, if the stack is empty, obviously, then the, the only option that you can have is to uh, retrieve uh, is to retrieve notes from the queue. So. Uh, and the other way around, if the queue is empty, then you can only treat, retrieve K nodes from the stack. So, so if a stack is empty, right? So if the stack is empty, then which means that the queue is. Uh, why am I not checking if queue is also empty? Because uh, in the in the notes you say you may assume k is also valid only one unique set so we're guaranteed that if uh, if stack is empty then we're guaranteed that q will not be empty um, because we there there will be some results and k will be valid so <coughs> and k is valid so uh, stack is empty then we will uh, 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 we will uh, results at we will pull one note from or one integer from the queue. So q dot pull. Okay. And else if q is empty. Okay. And then results at um, stack pop. What's popping? It's popping girl um, else okay so if Q is empty then we add the, uh, the, the, the L, uh, add uh, the top then pop the stack and add it to the results so now now in, the, in this situation the stack and Q are both not empty so we will need to have uh, first of all I uh, need we need to calculate the difference uh, between these two nodes to the target so we'll have um, double and we will have a let's say stack mm, uh, let's call it left different because I mean in, I'm picturing the stack it's on the left of the, the target uh, so left difference it's going to be math dot absolute and uh, we will calculate the difference between these two and we'll have pa uh, double and uh, stack dot peak we're not popping yet right minus target target okay M minus target not walmart okay uh double we'll pretty much copy it and do similar stuff except this time is on the right and also double stack q q peak minus target so now we can compare these two so if left is equal to if left diff is less than uh, right diff then okay then what we need to do is means that means uh, then something from the stack. <laughs> Excuse me. That this integer from the stack. <laughs> that this. Uh, I had too much lamb hot pots. <clears throat> that this integer from the stack is closer to the target. So what we need to do is to add the uh, stack to the result oh, well, the other way around is we need to add pull sorry I'm missing a parenthesis here so add a q pull uh, also you need to add the first element of the q to the results and uh, if they're equal if they're equal we'll add we'll assume 
and then we'll add this if they're equal if the differences are equal then we'll just add the first element of the queue to the result first because it doesn't matter the order doesn't matter and then after we're done we can just return the result list so we can go ahead and try with the one two three four five we can go ooh. and so let's see if we have time to go through it with eyeballs okay you know what I'm a little bit lazy I just want to see Ron god damn it uh, line 33, okay, missing a semicolon. Compass error. Line 18, cannot find symbol because I uh, cannot, because I cannot type. Four three, expected answer. Wow, I'm even faster than the, than the solution. Why are you pending so? God damn it. What the heck is going on, man? But 4 3 is expected, right? 4 3. Um, let's see uh, if we can uh, make it harder. Let's say 5. What will happen? Four, oh, that's all the number. And what about one? We should return four and two. We should return four two two. Oh, that's what I have. And what about three? We should return. Uh, Three, we return three, four, and five. Okay, this is good. I want to save some time to debug because this is a fairly long question. I, wanna, I don't want to spend too much time going um, eyeballing, eyeball proving my <laughs> my code. So, um, oh, okay, I'll, I'll submit it first. Accept it. Oh wow, cool, perfect. <laughs> I didn't even have time to. Uh, I don't even have you know need time to debug. Um, well, it says that. Uh, it says that. Uh, can I resolve it in less than n time? Uh, well, I guess if you want to resolve in an end time, then you have to take advantage of the tree. Like, like to be honest, I thought of doing something like tree. Uh, instead of uh, to be honest, I, when I when I thought of this uh, solution, I I did feel like uh, this is a little bit uh, necessary to just uh, traverse the whole tree. I feel like we can even take advantage of the property of binary search tree even better by just traverse the tree while we are adding the result but um, I guess you can just be well, well, you can if you're interested you can um, look at uh, I guess you can look at the discussion yourself to see if there's anyone um, that has a better solution but anyways well I'm glad it went well and this is uh, a hard question so <laughs> To be honest, I feel like this should be enough for an interview. And then you will have probably have to talk about just go through verbally your optimal, your better solution for less than bigger than a time. Um, anyways, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.